Welcome to Book of Acts Now Global School and Global Church. We're glad that you're here with us today as we continue to look at the Hebrew alphabet, the 22 letters uh, that make up the Hebrew alphabet. And of course, it is the foundation of the Word of God. And so we'll be looking today at the letter Yod, and it just looks like a little triangle. You see that? And what that represents is, if you were to hold up your elbow like this, your elbow is what moves the hand. And so that's the idea. The work of the hand is what that means. And it's pronounced Yod, and it has the Y sound. So we're going to look at some words today that use, that use the Yod so we can understand um, the original um, context for how this is used. So how many know that when you're looking at a language, it, it doesn't equally transfer over to English? You know, those of you that speak Spanish know that that's true. There are expressions and idioms that are just unique to that language, and we try the best we can to incorporate it into English, but it's not equal. It's not the same. Well, the same thing is true in biblical language. And so we want to teach people how to get into the Word and look at these letters and, and recognize them and understand their meaning so that you can get a deeper revelation of the Word of God. How many know that if if uh, mining for gold is important because it will bring you treasure, how much more important is it that we know how to mine in God's Word for the treasures of Him? Amen. All right, let's take a th look at the, uh, the letters that make up the word fear or the idea of having awe, the fear of God or having awe for God. And so it's made up of these letters. And we have the Yod here, which is the Y sound. This is the little mark for the, for the A, the Resh, highest person, and uh, the strong one, or father. And so let's put that together. It's pronounced from right to left, uh, Ya, remember that's the Y, Y-A, Ya-Ri. And so what does it mean, Ya-Ri? Well, look at that. You're already reading Hebrew. Ya-Ri, the work of the highest person. And so when we see and really understand the work of the highest person, you are in awe of God. All you have to do is go out on a starry night and look up there and see the Milky Way and see you know, the Milky Way representing not just planets but universes, galaxies, hundreds of thousands of galaxies in our universe and you stand in awe at the work of His hand. That's what this word means. Amen? Okay, straight or upright. It's made up, again, of three letters. The Yod. This letter here looks like a W, doesn't it? It has a dot over the right side of it. That's the SH sound. That's Shin, and it means to consume with fire. And this is Resh, which is the highest person. The work of the hand of the highest person. Now, here's something else. If it, it, just ignore the yod for a second. The, this uh, shin, a, and then the, the uh, resh, that is the word for prince. And so literally, the hand of the prince is at work. Well, how do you know if the hand of the king of glory is at work in your life? Your life will become straight and upright and righteous. That's how you can know that the work of the hand of the prince is is working in you. Amen? See, you can, you can say, Lord, Lord, but unless you're allowing Him to have your life and you're surrendered to Him and making Him your Lord, all you're doing is making um, an empty declaration. God wants to see uh, transformation in our lives, not just that we belong to some church or that we espouse certain doctrines because that's how we grew up. No, he wants to have the heart and to see you change so you're walking in his ways, in his paths, and you're walking in the straight ways of God. Amen? So this is pronounced from right to left. Yah, because you have, this is the Y sound, the A. Yah, and this is S-H-A-R. Yashar, you see that? Okay, the next word is important. This is the word Sometimes, like in a King James Bible, you see Lord, L-O-R-D. It's all capitalized. Well, 
Unfortunately, when they translated the different names of God, they translated them, most of them, Lord, L-O-R-D. But that's not what it says in the original. In the original Hebrew, it gives you his name. And if it's capitalized, it's almost always this, what we call the tetragram. It's uh, these continents, the Yod, the He, the Vav, and the He. And so we pronounce that Yod, He, Vav, He. And uh, vowels were added to that. And so if you add vowels to it, it could be uh, Yahweh. But Yahweh isn't even the original name. It's an expression of it. The original name doesn't have any vowels. It's just yod heh vav heh. Well, what does it mean and why is it important? Yeah? L-O-R-D doesn't mean anything, really. Um, even the common gods like Baal were called Lord. And, and so I don't know that we're really honoring God when we call him Lord because the name itself is just a common name for any god. Yeah? So if you use his original name, which is yod heh vav heh, it means this, the work. Now you see here, hey in the middle of the word always is a reference to God's heart. So check this out. The work of his heart is to reveal to you the nail. See that? So this work of his hand, his heart, this means to declare, reveal. And vav means the nail. So can you imagine? This is amazing. God's name literally is about helping us understand the work of the nail at Calvary, even in the Old Testament, the work of the nail. And here's the question that his name brings to us when we consider this. Has the nail been to your house? Has the nail crucified you with him? And so when Paul says, I'm crucified with him, it's no longer I who live, but Christ Yeshua who lives in me, that's a Hebrew concept. It comes from God's name in Hebrew. The nail needs to visit each of our lives. That's what his name means. So I hope, you know, perhaps this imagery will help us remember God's name. yod Hey vav Hey. The work of his heart is to declare the nail to mankind. See the father standing at the door. He's holding the nail and he's looking intently at you and me. And he's wanting to know, has, this, has my nail done its work in your life? And if so, I'll put my name on you. Man, that's powerful. And that comes right out of the Hebrew, amen? Okay, so establish. We have three letters. See that? You have the, the Yod, Shmik, and then the Dalit. Now the Dalit, whenever you see the Dalit, it means door, of course. That's the word picture. But it means more than that. That's the place where covenant was sealed with the blood. The blood was applied at Passover on the, the door mantle so that the, the angel of death would pass over and they would be set free from the, the plague and they would be released to a new destiny. So wherever you see the Dalit, it's speaking about applying covenant, right? So what does it mean to be established? Well... The work of his hand, this letter here, Schmick, means to support. The work of his hand supports the door. And when that happens, this is talking about your door, the door of your heart, the door of your home, the door of your house, the door of your family. When you allow the work of his hand to support the door where you come and go and enter and live, you'll find yourself established. Established in what? Established in his name, established in his righteousness, established in salvation, established in deliverance, established in provision, established in his ways. Come on, I might start preaching. Are we established in him? It's all about where's the blood. Have you applied the blood or do you just go to church once a week? and you're following along with the traditions of men, or have you actually applied the blood? And I think we need to apply it on a regular basis. You know, I've been in homes where um, they've had demonic interference and all kinds of terrible things going on. A lot of that has to do with having allowed occult activity 
or entertainment that has a cult involved with it or, or demonic games in the house. And so there's a disruption of the peace. I've had people call me, will you come anoint my house because we're being harassed by the devil? Well, usually because that's we open the door for it. And so we'll take anointing oil, which represents applying the blood, and put it on the door, the entrances to the house, and tell the devil to leave. We we'll lead the family in repenting and reconsecrating their family, reconsecrating their home to God, and tell the devil to get out, and it all stops. Now, maybe you don't have that kind of demonic activity going on in your house, but how, how really great is it if we would just go ahead and consecrate our house and make a statement, Devil, you're not welcome here. This is hallowed ground. This is holy ground. We belong to the Lord, Yeshua, Hamashiach. We belong to yod heh vav -Heh. We belong to Yahweh. This is His house and His ground. It is holy and you're not allowed to be here. And when you leave, take sickness with you and affliction with you. That's not welcome and COVID better not even dare cross the threshold of this house because it's not allowed. Whoa, wait a minute, hold it. How can you make that kind of declaration? Because it says in Psalms 91, no, it says, no plague will come nigh unto thy dwelling. Why don't we get serious about applying the Word of God? You know, so we're, we, we move a lot in fear today. I'm going to have to wear a mask. And I understand that governments and different ones mandate it. You know, certain um, institutions mandate it if you go shopping. I understand all that. But I'm not afraid of the virus because of who I belong to. We can take reasonable precautions, I understand. But I'm not afraid of it because I know the one who holds tomorrow is the one who holds my hand. And he has promised to be with me, and, and no plague will come nigh unto me or my dwelling. And if it does, you take authority over it and tell it, hey, you're trespassing, get out. <laughs> apply the blood. And if you're worried about it, get up every day and apply the blood. The Bible says it, it can't come nigh unto thy dwelling. So let's say you've been shopping somewhere, and that virus, it's, it's connecting itself to you because it wants to invade you. And wants to go, you know, that virus attacks the cells in your body. You know that. And, and then it goes from one cell to another until it attacks a billion cells. And that's how it takes over. But listen, you've consecrated yourself in your home. And, and your, the door, the entrance of your home, has got the blood on it. What did that do in Israel's time? When they put the blood on the door, death could not touch them. And not only that, they were set free. To go on a journey and says not one was feeble or sick among them. All illness and affliction and sickness left them. And they went with provision into a new destiny. Listen, how exciting to apply that same blood to your house. And if that virus tried to attach itself to you at Walmart. And you walk through that door that's covered by the blood of the Lamb. And by His promise and His faithfulness. That virus dies as soon as you walk through the threshold of your house are you not standing on the word of God are you among those who are rushing to Walmart to buy up all the toilet paper because you think terrible things are coming listen how much better that we believe the word of God does not return void but accomplishes the purpose for which it's sent I'm not afraid of the virus you know why because my house has been consecrated and there's blood on the doorpost. And when I walk in, anything that tried to follow me home gets kicked out, smashed, and sent into the depths of the sea or into the wilderness or into hell where it belongs. That's how we need to live. We need to live by faith. Amen. We're established in the Word. Established in the blood of the Lamb. Come on now, I'm going to start preaching. The word dwell. So we again three letters. The yod, which is the Y sound, A, S H, A, and uh, and Vav. Now the bet, if it has a dot here, it has the B boy sound, remember? If there's no dot there, it has the V victory sound. So this is pronounced Ya. That's the S H Sha V. Yashav. Yes? Okay, so what does it mean? Well, okay, this means the work of his hand. This is the fire. 
This is the house. The work of his hand in the house. So listen. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High because you're consecrated to him, your house is consecrated to him, then your house becomes the secret place of the Most High. And, and if you read Psalms 91, it says, I will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. He will rescue my feet from the snare of the fowler and COVID. He will rescue my feet. He will cover me with his wings. And no plague will come nigh unto my dwelling because my dwelling, come on now, it's been consecrated to him. It belongs to him. It's covered in the blood, and the devil can't come there. And literally, Psalms 91, where it says that you're going to abide in the secret place of the Most High, it actually means I'm going to abide in the place where the devil cannot touch me. How would you like to live in a house where the devil can't touch you? Come on now. Is it consecrated? Has anybody, as a pastor or anybody ever suggested to you it would be a good thing to anoint your house and, and plead the blood over your house so the, de the dwelling is consecrated and belongs to him. If not, you need to do so. Because the devil can't come through the threshold. It belongs to God. See, that's why when a bride and groom, when they get married, and you know, the old, it was an old tradition that the groom would carry the bride across the threshold. You know why? You can't step on the threshold of my house. It's been consecrated with the blood of the Lamb. It's holy. And if you step on that, you're, you're trampling the covenant. And you will not enter my house trampling the covenant. You'll honor the covenant in my house. And I'm carrying you in to make sure you do. Come on. Maybe we need to revive some of that imagery in marriages today. You're, we're going to get married. You're going to enter my house. You're going to have everything you've ever dreamed of. And Mr. Handsome, no. You're going to have a covenant with the living God. And he's the one who's going to meet your needs. I'm talking to somebody. To give thanks to God, praise to God, and be thankful. The word for thanks, yod, and we have dalit, the place where the blood is, and to declare. Now check this out. The work at the door is to declare the covenant. The, the covenant is at the door. That's what gets made there. So the work of his hand at the door is to declare, the co this means declare, declare the covenant at, of the door. And so, real thanksgiving to God. Now you give thanks to God for anything. Thank you for my paycheck. Thank, thank you that I'm able to pay my bills, and I do. But really, true thanksgiving has to do with honoring the covenant. I thank you, God, that your covenant promise is if I give 10% as you told me to give as a tithe of my income, you promised you'd open the windows of heaven and bestow blessings on me that I can't even receive. That's giving thanks that honors covenant. Yes? And so true thanksgiving that we're giving needs to be looked at in terms of the covenant. Thank you, Father, that you're supplying all my needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Yeshua. Because your word will not come back void. You have promised it will always accomplish its purpose. That's your covenant promise. Thank you. I give you thanks. Amen, amen. Yahweh bless us. yod heh bav -Hey bless us as we meditate on and consider Yod this week to fear his name, to walk in his ways, a straight path. Um, to honor yod heh vav -Hey, uh, to understand the work of the nail in my life is about consecrating me to him, uh, to be established uh, because his hand supports his work in my life, to dwell in the secret place, to dwell in the place that's covered by the blood, and to give thanks for all the covenant blessings. We thank him today as we end and ask him to bless us this week as we walk in covenant. Amen. Hallelujah! Glory!